Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton. I'm at CES 2014 in Las Vegas, and I'm joined by JJ on the Mercedes booth. JJ, thanks for talking to me. You're welcome. This, uh, this booth, like many of the automotive booths, has been packed all day today. Why do you think uh, automotive electronics seems to be the real star of CES this year? I think it has multiple reasons. On the one hand, you know, people really want to continue their digital lifestyle in their cars. Mm -hmm. They don't want to stop their life, so to speak. You know, that's, oh, I have to do this thing before I get in the car. So that means there's a huge desire, you know, to be able to, you know, continue their digital lifestyle in the car as they get into the car. That's number one. And then, of course, with that, that drives a lot of innovation. It, it, you know, it forces us, and I think it's a good movement, actually, for us to think about innovative solutions that we do a perfect integration of their smartphones, of mm. the customers' devices in the cars. That brings me to another topic, which I think is also very important, this merger and the intersection of you know, the consumer electronics, like wearable devices, a huge trend this year. We have been the first OEM, actually, and it's a world premiere we announced here today, is the integration of the Pebble smartwatch. Okay. So um, we have integrated the Pebble smartwatch, and we will bring this to market, actually, already in spring of this year. and. Uh, with different use cases. On the one hand, the driving mode, where you can you know, put some favorite uh, functions on the main keys of the Pebble smartwatch. Also, with the first to market in December with car to X, car to car communication, all these warnings you're getting, hazards on the road or broken down vehicle and so on, you are also getting as an alert on your watch uh, as a vibration and you know, it's in your field of view, okay. which actually makes it very easy. And then, of course, another topic, is the Internet of Things, right. which yeah. is also, uh, you know, basically now that the car is connected and we say it's intelligently connected, at least our Mercedes-Benz cars, um, the car is now becoming part of the Internet of Things. And so it's communicating, it's connected to your smart uh, phones, mm. your smart home with the Nest Labs integration. We are the first OEM, another world premiere to integrate uh, the car with your Nest thermostat. Yeah. And uh, it's fun. There's yeah. a lot of actually potential, and we'll get to another topic, a very hot topic of artificial intelligence yeah. as well. Yeah. Okay. So just going going back to what you talk about the uh, the kind of ecosystem, the Internet of Things. You've got the smart car. You've got all that intelligence there. You've got all the intelligence in your device. But we need intelligence in the surrounding area, and that overlaps into that area of smart cities. Is there collaboration then between? those developers, those architects that are putting together those infrastructures, and you, the automotive suppliers? Uh, there's certainly uh, interaction and communication and exchange of uh, information and knowledge about, you know, what are basically uh, the challenges, you know, like for example, with our car to go concept, mm -hmm. you know, in very dense uh, uh, cities, for example, mega cities, uh, we have a lot of customers actually which do not uh, own a car, but they still want access to a car. Yeah. In the meantime, we have 500,000 smarts actually around the world uh, with car to go just as car sharing. Mm -hmm. So it means, uh, you know, a different concept of, you know, not just thinking about selling cars, leasing cars, but actually offering sharing solutions like yeah. Car2Go. Yeah, and it's a different concept of urban mobility, different generation, the generation that's used to consuming content, they'll perhaps consume their transport in a different way. Exactly. So yeah. it's definitely uh, very important. And, you know, with the car being connected, you know, to the Internet of Things, to your home and so on, and even to other cars now with Car2Car -car communication, Car2X communication, uh, we actually uh, see a huge potential for creating a user experience, you know, which uh, makes life easier, mm. which makes life safer, and you know, adds uh, convenience yeah. and comfort. And yeah, and and the other area that you you started to mention, artificial intelligence. You've got this term intelligent drive. We're hearing things like piloted vehicles, driverless vehicles. How far away, realistically, do you think that kind of technology is from actually being in day-to-day -day use? So partially autonomous uh, vehicles, you know, basically are on the road today. Our S-Class with our intelligent drive package uh, with a long list of driver assistance systems. We have already added now a stop and go pilot with steering wheel assist, which actually uh, in comparison to the Stronic Plus, which we offered in the past, now uh, in addition to the uh, acceleration and braking, it also actually takes over uh, steering uh, for the slow speeds, uh, you know, in uh, stop and go traffic. And uh, what we have committed to as a brand, as a company, that until the end of this decade, we will bring uh, more and more autonomous features to market. For example, a highway pilot or parking uh, pilot and uh, 
there is definitely a huge movement in yeah. this space and uh, we think we are leading this pack. Yeah, it's certainly a super strong trend, isn't it? And you talked earlier about the difference between consumer electronics, if you like, in the automotive world. You have very different R&D cycles. You have very different reliability cycles. I can put up with my cell phone not working. I don't want my driver assist not to work. So there are different mission critical issues there. How do you how do you manage that? Not just in the what you bring to market, but the way you develop, the way you manufacture, the way you manage your supply chain. So it's definitely um, on the one hand a challenge, on the other hand also an opportunity, and uh, we see this as an opportunity. You know, with all the computing power and memory and uh, so on, and GPU power you have in the vehicles today. Uh, on the one hand, you know, for intelligent drive and for artificial intelligence. Uh, I actually mentioned before with our predictive user experience, we are actually um, working on a new way of actually using artificial intelligence for improving the user experience. Mm -hmm. So the car really becomes a true digital companion, uh, kind of as an old friend. It knows your habits, it knows your preference, it knows about you, and actually I can uh, go a little bit deeper into that. But looking at you know the technological side, we actually have a clear firewall between you know the connected side which is connected to the internet yeah. and the internet of things and then you know all mission critical uh, yeah. functions and features in the car where clearly uh, you know there is no let's say um, uh, possibility so yeah. to speak to break in and make some systems yeah. fail or so yeah. and that is very important and that's the security part of it we also have actually a secure link even between our cars and our Mercedes-Benz cloud, so to speak. And another important topic for us is privacy, right. data privacy. That we really have an opt-in approach that we ask customers, you know, if they are willing to share information with us. For example, for this predictive user experience, yeah. you know, where we take your historical data into account, you know, destinations you are driving to, yeah. uh, the people who are in the car, whether you have your kids with you or not. Uh, you know the time of the day, the day uh, of the week, whether it's a weekday or a uh, weekend day, and depending on uh, the surroundings, depending on the context, so to speak, you know your habits, the preferences, the location, uh, the weather, and so on and so on, we can offer actually a user experience which yeah. is so unique, and it you know based it's all based on artificial intelligence and yeah. predictive predictive uh, engines uh, and uh, algorithms, and we developed all of this in house. Uh, because we want to not share customer data with third yeah. parties, we want to keep this knowledge and, and the value and so on yeah, in-house. Exactly. Well, and we look around here, there are a plethora of new products, a plethora of new technologies, new, new user ideas. Some of those will find their way into automotive. Is that through collaboration? Do you find yourself as, a, as an industry that's traditionally very vertically, vertically integrated, having to partner, having to collaborate more, and actually embracing that? Oh yeah, we absolutely embrace it, and actually that's one of the reasons why I'm in Silicon Valley with my team. Uh, we have a, a very large, actually the largest automotive uh, R&D center in Silicon Valley in Sunnyvale, and with more than 100 engineers actually growing, we'll double our resources in the next five years, and uh, we focus heavily on uh, the partnerships, for example, with Google, uh, we uh, formed a strategic partnership in 2012, uh, with Google uh, to bring you know Google Places, Google uh, Maps, and so on into the car. We are uh, also partnering with uh, Nest Labs, for example, for the Nest thermostat integration. We uh, also have partnered with uh, Pebble, for example, for the Pebble yep. smartwatch yeah. integration, and with many, many others. You know, for example, to bring internet content into the cars with our Mercedes-Benz apps. Okay, sounds excellent. And last question: we we're seeing the German car manufacturers. Pretty much leading this, um, leading this march. Do you think that Silicon Valley in innovation and German engineering is the killer combination? Is that what's driving the success? I don't want to, let's say, limit it to nationalities mm -hmm. or countries or so. But certainly, as Mercedes-Benz, uh, we have been actually the first automotive OEM in Silicon Valley. Uh, we founded the company in 1994. We opened our first lab in 1995, long before you know others. And uh, we have now the largest lab there. And we really see. Basically, on the one hand, this intersection of consumer electronics, of internet giants, and also small startups, uh, together with us as OEM, uh, partnering and you know letting our engineers and designers you know really work closely together, 
and partnering with other companies, it's definitely a huge, uh, you know, um, how should I say this, talent pool and yeah, creative it's uh, pool, uh, part. And, and yeah. uh, it's, it's amazing how many great solutions are actually being developed and designed uh, if you also give people freedom, actually. Yeah to come up with these solutions yeah. and uh, they actually almost have a feeling they're developing the, this for themselves because yeah. it, you know, it improves their own life and yeah. makes life easier. And it becomes, an, it becomes an exciting new product. JJ, fantastic insight. Thank you so much for your time. I hope the rest of the show is equally successful and I hope we can speak again soon. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much.